Bringing a puppy home is an exciting and new experience for many dog owners. One of the biggest challenges you'll have to tackle with your new puppy is house training. To help us demonstrate some house training practices, we have Maisie, the Cardigan Welsh Corgi, joining us today. Always remember that when you start house training your dog, you have to be patient. Your dog will be getting used to a new environment and also learning where he can and can't relieve himself. It's also important to know that house training is more than just laying out wee pads for your dog. Creating a routine for him is all part of the house training experience. To help us create a stress-free schedule for your dog, we have Sarah Westcott from Doggy Academy to give us some tips. Hi Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you. So tell us, what are some key things we should know about house training? Well, the three main concepts that you want to think about are supervision, confinement, and management. So under the supervision, that's where we really find out what our dogs are trying to tell us when they do have to go to the bathroom. So really observing your dog's natural behavior. Um, and then in terms of confinement, we want to create a space for them when they are less likely to have accidents. And most popularly, it, we use um, crate training for that. Um, and then under management, um, this is for times when we can't leave the dogs uh, for, we're leaving the dogs for much longer than they can hold themselves. So we use things like um, wee wee pads to help with that. Um, we control their diet um, and timing of the diet so that we can control their output as well. Mm -hmm. And that all falls under management. As Sarah mentioned, having a crate will come in handy when house training your dog. Dogs are den animals, which means they enjoy cave-like environments that make them feel secure. Dogs are by nature clean animals who like to live in spotless spaces. Having a crate gives them a personal living space they want to maintain clean and helps aid in house training. When choosing a crate, make sure it's large enough for your dog to lie down, stand up, and turn around. If it is too large, the dog will think it's okay to use one corner to relieve himself. Sometimes owners will give their dogs treats to get them into their crate. Sarah, what are your thoughts on giving your dogs treats for this purpose? Absolutely. Uh, in addition to just giving treats, we also want to give them projects, things that will make them really eager to get into their crate, make it a really fun place. Um, and I call them projects. They're things that your dogs can work on without you having to entertain them. So things like a stuffed Kong, you can put peanut butter in there and give it to your dog in their crate and they're going to think, yes, awesome, crate time means peanut butter time. <laughs> or something like a bully stick, your dog will work on this all by themselves, chewing on it. Most dogs love this and they will be completely content in their crate by themselves. Paper training or using a wee pad is another option used during house training. However, this method can get a little tricky. By using this form of training, you may be sending mixed signals to your dog that it's okay for him to go inside the house. But it's a helpful alternative during the puppy years, if the weather is bad, or you're not able to come home during the day to take him out regularly. Make sure to leave the wee pad in one spot in the home so he knows that it's the designated area he can relieve himself. Once the dog matures, it's important to focus on teaching him that he should only do his business outdoors. One thing that stumps many new dog owners is how to wean their dog off of the wee pad when he's so used to going on it. Sarah, what do you suggest dog owners do to help this process? Well, first they need to make sure that they're able to get their dog out as often as necessary. Um, so if the puppy can only hold themselves for, let's say, three hours at that point, you need to be able to get them out at least every three hours. And once you, you're there, then you're just going to do away with the wee pads altogether. Um, wash the whole area with something like Nature's Miracle that's going to uh, really take away all of the scent of the dog's waste. And then almost go back to square one in terms of your house training. You're really going to be watching your dog and making sure that uh, you're going to keep them successful. If they start going back over to where the wee pad was, then you know, hey, let's go outside right now and make sure that you give them lots and lots of um, praise and attention when they go to the bathroom in the right spot. But it's best to just do it all at once, just get rid of them and, um, and take that step back in terms of keeping them successful. Another key to house training is to make sure you feed your dog at the same time every day. This is a good way to control the diet and to help set up a feeding schedule for him. He'll know when to expect to be fed and when he will go out. Make sure to take him out first thing in the morning, after eating, after playtime, every time he is taken out of the crate, and before bedtime. 
Not only will he get regular exercise, but he will associate walks with relieving himself outside. You'll get to know your dog's habits and behaviors pretty quickly, which is why it's important to pay close attention. By learning to distinguish his whimpering, barking, or other behavior, you'll know when he's trying to get your attention to go out. Keep in mind, age and your dog size plays an important factor on how long your dog can hold out on relieving himself. Sarah, what's a good rule of thumb to follow when determining the length of time your dog is able to hold it in? Well, think about how old your dog is in terms of months. So let's say your dog is three months old, add one. So now your puppy at three months should be able to hold themselves for about four hours. That doesn't mean that they will hold it for four hours, it just means that they're capable of holding it for four hours. As you said before, puppies have a tendency to go to the bathroom after they eat, drink, sleep, or play, so you're always going to want to be watching them. Thank you for all those helpful tips, Sarah. So let's wrap up what we learned today. Crate training is a good way to teach your dog to keep his own space clean. Use treats as a means to help your dog create a positive association with the crate. Controlling your dog's diet will help you determine his feeding schedule and how often he will need to go out. Learn your dog's body language, which may indicate when he's alerting you that he needs to go out. Your dog's age and size will determine how long he can wait to go out. Remember that the younger and smaller the dog is, the less time he can hold it in. This can also vary upon each dog. We hope this information will make house training a lot easier for you and your dog. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing your expertise and helping break down the importance of house training. And thank you, Maisie, for being a great guest and showing us how a housebroken dog is supposed to behave. House training may not always be easy, but the reward is always well worth it. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to stream our videos on akc.tv. Tune in next time for another episode of Home is Where the Dog Is, where we'll discuss how to deal with your puppy's teenage years.